Hello again everyone, this is Michael Wojak with the Rochester City Council update for November 2nd, 2009. I'm going to talk about a couple issues. I'm going to talk about um, funding for um, organizations outside of the city. I'm going to talk about um, downtown study, um, some buses, and of course your sewer rates. But I think what I want to start out with is um, I want to make the uh, point that I made in, um, during the city council meeting and that is kind of um, what I call the triple witching of our core neighborhoods. It was, I, I did have an opportunity Tuesday night to attend the um, kickoff for the Citizens League um, event here in Rochester. It looks it looks very promising. I think it's something that we need in this um, community to actually get together and talk about issues without um, necessarily having special interests dominate that discussion. And I brought up something called the triple witching of our core neighborhoods. And one of the things that they talked about at the, um, at, at the meeting that I attended on Tuesday night um, was that there's nobody succeeds in a bad neighborhood um, and yet we don't do what we can to sometimes address when neighborhoods have issues and there are three things in particular I think that we do as a city that really hurts the core neighborhoods. The uh, first thing we do is we um, disproportionately tax them and charge them um, extra fees and taxes so that we can subsidize um, development in sprawled out areas. I don't think it's fair to our core neighborhood. I think it's um, you know, I, I think that's something that tends to hurt them quite a bit. Uh, the second thing we do is we let um, developers or slum lords run roughshod over these these core neighborhoods, and I think that that um, again, you you take a neighborhood that's already funding expansion in other parts of the city, and then you're um, letting them be exploited by um, um, some bad developments in some cases. Sometimes there's good developments, sometimes there's bad, but also um, you know slum lords. If we wanted to, if we had four people on the city council that said we're going to take care of slum lords tomorrow. We could do it. Um, your job as citizens, I think, are to make sure we have those four people that want to really take on the slumlords. Um, <clears throat> and the third thing we do is, on an ongoing basis, um, we ignore their needs and we um, we tax them disproportionately for the resources they consume. A simple example being on um, fire stations. We know that uh, if a fire station, um, depending on land development patterns, a fire station can cover. 10,000 homes or 1,000 homes. We know that those 1,000 homes have a very dispropor disproportionate consumption of the um, tax resources. Yet, at the same time, we don't um, we don't factor that into our taxes. In fact, the state doesn't let that factor us into our taxes. So the result is a dense uh, core neighborhood like Kutsky or Falwell or um, Slatterly Park end up paying a lot more in taxes but receiving a lot less services. I think it's a great disservice to our neighborhood, and um, this keeps rearing its ugly head. We keep making bad decisions, and um, I'm going to keep talking about it until we get serious about uh, addressing this. Some issues that came up at the meeting. We had a request to um, give... $36,000 more to the Southeastern Minnesota Rail Alliance. Uh, a while ago I brought up that as long as we're funding outside organizations with um, city tax dollars, I wanted to see financial statements. Um, for some reason, um, they tried to put this, uh, um, staff put this on the consent agenda without actually providing us any um, financial statements from the Southeastern Minnesota Rail Alliance. And um, I think it's really quite simple. If we're giving a group money, the um, public has a right to see um, how that money is being used and what I'm asking for is I'm asking for an income statement and a balance sheet. That's uh, I, I don't think that's too much to ask for and quite frankly if any organization can't produce an income statement and a balance sheet, why in God's name are we giving them money anyway? So that's, um, that's kind of the issue that I face right there. Um, so we, we tabled it but I'm, I'm hoping to get it back. I, should, I get get a little spreadsheet or PDF file that had some income and expenses on it, which was just ridiculous. Um, any competent organization can provide an income statement and a balance sheet, and that's what I'm expecting before we dole out more money to this group. <clears throat> we also um, approved a downtown mobility study. This is on top of the downtown planning study that we did last week. Now we're spending a total of $600,000 between uh, the city and some other groups. Paying for all this, the issue being um, this is all well and good. I'm sure we're going to end up with a very good plan out of that. Are we going to stick to it or are we going to play this game like we did on 2nd Street where the first time a developer wants to um, force through a project, we're going to make sure that no actual standards should apply. Um, we also purchased some... Um, <clears throat> Um, agreed to purchase some buses. We compared um, conventional diesels to um, hybrid diesels. I'm not entirely convinced that I'm um, 
happy with the analysis that was done. I'd like to dig into the numbers a little bit more. I think in the future we will be heading towards these hybrid buses because I think that their lifetime operating costs are actually going to end up being far less. I think there were some assumptions that were tended to be ignored, not to mention the fact that uh, diesels put out uh, particular matter that um, is very difficult for um, individuals with asthma. And you know, when you have one of the, when you have the finest medical institution in the world, I think particular matter is something that we ought to be concerned about. Um, the, big, the big thing that um, I certainly spent a fair amount of time talking about, I think the uh, newspaper covered it very well, was the, um, the sewer rates. Um, you know, it's, I've, I've expressed my concerns of the way the sewer rates are set up. If you live in a responsible, dense urban neighborhood, you get to pay extra money so that you can subsidize new development. And you get to subsidize that new development, whether it's quality or absolutely poor. I mean, if, um, you know, if somebody wanted to go up and build another Cimarron Court, you know, the, the ghetto duplexes that uh, I think DeWitt's put up back in the 80s, you would be subsidizing those at a rate of 10000 per unit. Um, not, not, nothing like um, subsidizing ghettos, huh? Um, you know, it, it's really unfortunate. It's not fair to the people that live in that neighborhood that we tolerate those kind of poor development practices, and it's certainly not fair to our uh, our taxpayers and our ratepayers that we be subsidizing that. Essentially, we're taking um, money out of our core neighborhoods, out of some of our poorest areas, and we're subsidizing development with it. I brought up the number um, over the next 17 years. What we've implemented right now is um, going to amount to a $68.2 million subsidy for developers. Uh, just, um, just absolutely sickening, if you ask me, especially given the fact that we don't even get to ensure quality development based on that. Now, the, um, we are going to go forward with the recommendation that we're going to study this in the future. And um, I did make a point that I want a serious study group. I don't want the kind of group where um, you know, development interests that represent maybe 10% of the communities end up with 50% um, or a majority of seats at the table. <clears throat> we have plenty of talented staff that can sit down and um, figure this out. Um, <clears throat> we, 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 know what, we know the truth of the matter is that quality development saves us a lot of money overall. And if we're going to be providing these enormous subsidies and it's $10,000 per single family home, we should get something great in return. And the fact is right now in a lot of circumstances we just are not. It's it's poor tax policy and it's utterly unfair to some of our neighborhoods that need the help more. So the City Council's decision continues this practice of um, triple witching our core neighborhoods and I think it's something that I'm going to continue to fight and I'm going to continue to be outspoken about it. Um, a couple of logistical issues then. As you know I always keep this under 10 minutes. I've heard that a lot of people enjoy watching the videos. Um, I hear the biggest complaint I hear is they get pretty sick of looking at my face after about 10 minutes. So um, we're going to do our best to try and integrate some, um, perhaps some slides and um, get some get some guests in here from time to time to talk about issues as well. And um, if any of you want to put together a short little like um, intro um, clip or something that we could play at the beginning of this, I'm, I'm cool with that too. I, the general um, consensus seems to be they want to see less of they like the issues, but they want to see less of my face. So um, we can we can we can deal with that. Um, other than that, I look forward to um, fielding any questions that you have for me. You can always get me at um, votewojack at gmail.com or at my website, uh, votewojack.org. My telephone number is listed. Um, thank you for all of you that are stepping up and helping me with some of these issues that our neighborhoods face. Um, it, it is important, and um, some of this stuff, you know, we, can, we continue to lose on, but we're asking the right questions, and um, we're going to continue drawing attention to these issues, and um, it will, in, in time, we will be successful on a number of these things. Um, so keep up the good fight and keep watching these videos. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.